In my never-ending quest to hack all the lamps, the latest victim of my hacking is the Tesco LED lamp. This one is rated 7.3 watts, and initially it looked as though it was the fairly standard construction. I'm just going to zoom down a little bit in this, just to get the picture a bit bigger. So it's the usual construction, the plastic dome that comes off the base with uh, silicon sort of gluing it around the inside. A 30 ohm resistor as a fusible resistor and then the linear current regulator but this is where it all goes a bit weird because this does not use standard circuitry. Let me show you a close-up of the circuit board because I have pre-prepared one, this particular one. So uh, I shall put this down here and I shall note the weird components. So we start off with a fairly decent number of LEDs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm going to guess that those are six chip LEDs. We have the usual arrangement. We've got the capacitor pushed through from the back of the circuit board through one of those little push-through connectors. We've also got the mains coming through via that resistor. And there's a little metal oxide varistor here for clipping spikes, a bridge rectifier, and then it all goes a bit weird with this diode and a chip that doesn't just regulate the current through the LEDs, but it also regulates the current to the capacitor. And I'm not sure why this is. I get the feeling that it's to do with cheating power factor. Um, these two resistors are in series. They're uh, 820K and they are across that capacitor to provide a decisive going out of the lamp um, when you turn it off and also to provide a slight load to uh, limit the risk of lamp ghosting. In the case of uh, hacking the lamp, the two important components are this 54.9 ohm resistor and this 49.9 ohm resistor here. They add up to about 26 ohms. If you snap one of these off, either of them off, um, just break it or desolder it wherever you want. It's quite hard desoldering on these aluminum boards, uh, but removing one of these will pretty much half the power of the lamp and make it last a much longer time. Let's take a look at the schematic. And it is weird. So it's based around a chip called an MT7618N. By all means, look up the data sheet in that. I did, uh, hold on, I've got the data sheet here. It's a single page and provides very little information. It provides the schematic, um, but no information about what the other components do. The, the main thing is to say is high power factor, power factor greater than 0.7. I get the feeling that this circuitry is preemptively ticking a European box, uh, whereby the particular powers of lamps have to have a specific better power factor than, than uh, the set level. And that might be what this is for. So here's the circuitry. The main supply comes in. There's a 30 ohm resistor, which acts as a fuse. There's the metal oxide varistor there, which clips any spikes. There's the bridge rectifier. And then rather perplexingly, there is this high speed ES1J diode. And the only thing I can think about with this diode is that because this is a high speed diode, it effectively means that the bridge rectifier uh, acts as a basically high speed bridge rectifier in the sense that it's got a fast recovery time. I really haven't a clue about why. I don't know why they've done this. Because it doesn't really matter because the bridge rectifier is amply rated for the 50 or 60 hertz. That, that's effectively 100 by the time it gets rectified, 100, 120 hertz. That is not fast. It doesn't really need a high speed diode. That's very strange. I'd normally expect to see that in a switchwood power supply. I don't know why that diode is there. Uh, thoughts in the comments down below. After that, uh, it looks almost like a standard linear regulator with the LEDs in series and then a current sent resistor, which is composed in this case of those two resistors that you can chop one off if you wish to change the value. And that uh, resistor will set the current that flows through those LEDs with the rest being dissipated by this chip into the aluminum housing. And if it gets too hot, it will thermally regulate. Very simple circuit, very low noise. That's good. But here's the weird bit. There is the electrolytic capacitor that smooths the supply. It's 400 volts, a 4.7 microfarad death beam capacitor. And it's got its two discharge resistors across it, but it goes to the chip and it has its own current sent resistor. And what that means is that whereas at the, in a normal circuit, when you've got the rectified sort of mains looking like this, normally because the capacitor is charged almost to the full level of the peak mains voltage, it means all the current tends to be drawn at the top. And what this is 
doing by the look of it is trying to just smooge that out a bit, widen that a oh, bit more over the uh, sine wave by limiting the current into the capacitor so that it basically occupies more of the sine wave and is therefore effectively improves the power factor, which is the relationship of the voltage to the current. I think it's a bit of European bureaucracy that is trying to tick the box. And to be honest, in such a low power lamp, I don't think it really matters. But this is what they're doing. So there's that 5.1 ohm resistor. I'm not sure what else is in this chip. Rather unhelpfully, there's this uh, resistive divider, which looks like it's going to some sort of sense input. And the data sheet uh, simply tells you that this pin is called LN. I haven't a clue what that's for. All I can think is that maybe it's to detect if the LEDs have shorted out and the voltage across this is too high. I'm not sure I thought that could have been sensed inside. I really don't know why they've got this uh, resistive divider tapping off there. Maybe LN, well, I'll just invent something, lesbian nun. It's the lesbian nun input. That's uh, the only thing I can think of here that would make sense for this circuitry. It's very strange. A very incomplete data sheet, a completely seemingly pointless diode, um, and a complication of circuitry that has doubled the complication of the circuitry in, in the lamp, it's seemingly just to tick a box and improve figures to fill in those boxes, almost like diesel emission type figures. How very strange. But uh, certainly, uh, leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Tell me what you think they've done this for, this high-speed diode in series the bridge rectifier, um, and why they're trying to smoosh that. Is it just purely power factor correction? And this uh, here, what's this sensing? I can only think it's sensing the voltage across, being dropped across the chip, but it's just strange. Very odd indeed. It's a mystery lamp.